Hello everyone. This video would focus on elliptic paraboloid. Let's look at the definition of an elliptic paraboloid. An elliptic paraboloid is one of the quadric surfaces such that its sections parallel to one of the coordinate plane are ellipses, while the section parallel to the other coordinates are parabola. Now let's look at the equation and the graph of an elliptic paraboloid. We remember that in this three-dimensional coordinate system, the red represents the x-axis, the green represents the y-axis, and the blue represents the z-axis. Now let's look at the formula of an elliptic paraboloid. So this is the equation of an elliptic paraboloid. Quantity x minus h squared over a squared plus quantity y minus k squared over b squared equals z minus j over c. Now let's look at the graph of an elliptic paraboloid. So this is the shape of an elliptic paraboloid. The name elliptic paraboloid got its name from the two combined conic sections, the ellipse and the parabola. Now notice this very carefully. So if I position this um, graph of an elliptic paraboloid this way, you will see that it is a parabola. So this is a, the shape of a parabola. Now if I position this elliptic paraboloid graph this way, you will see that this is an ellipse shape and that's the reason why we get the name elliptic paraboloid because it's a combination of a parabola and an ellipse. Now please remember that if we set h equals 0, k is 0, j is 0, we are able to get the parent equation of an elliptic paraboloid. So the parent equation of an elliptic paraboloid is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals z over c. And this is the parent graph of an elliptic paraboloid. Now let's look at the effects of h, k, and j on the graph of an elliptic paraboloid. Please remember that the h translates the graph along the x-axis. Remember, the x-axis is the red. And on the other hand, our k translates the graph across the y-axis. So if you notice, it translates our, along the y-axis, which is represented as the green axis. And on the other hand, if we change the value of j, it's going to translate the graph across the z-axis, which is again in this graph represented by the blue um, axis. Now let's look at the effects of a, b, and c on the graph of an elliptic paraboloid. Please notice that if we increase the value of a, this stretches the ellipse along the x-axis. On the other hand, the effect of B is that it stretches the ellipse along the y-axis. And the effects of C on the graph is that it makes the elliptic paraboloid skinnier or it makes the um, elliptic paraboloid wider. So if it's towards the zero, the elliptic paraboloid will become wider. But if you notice, if we get a C of zero, it becomes undefined since in the equation, the C is in the denominator. And if we have a zero denominator, it becomes undefined, so it doesn't exist. On the other hand, if the C becomes negative, now notice that the elliptic paraboloid starts to open downward. So if you notice, it starts opening downward once we get a negative value of C. So this is the um, effect of C on the elliptic paraboloid.
We also remember that we can change the orientation of the elliptic paraboloid by interchanging the variables that gives a different variable in the linear term of the equation. So going back to the equation right here, the linear part of the equation is the z part here. That's the reason why this elliptic paraboloid here is opening along the z-axis since that's the linear part. Please remember as well that this x goes with a, the y goes with b, and the z goes with c. Now notice this very carefully. If I switch this x, a, and z, c, notice what happens. You can see that the graph opens along the x-axis since again the linear part of this equation has an x on it so that means the graph is opening across the x-axis so you see it opens along the x-axis because remember our x-axis is the red axis now notice this very carefully that if I have the y as part of the linear equation, it's going to open along the green axis. So I'm going to interchange the y and the x here. If you notice, the elliptic paraboloid opens along the y axis, which is the green. Because again, in the equation, the linear part has y on it. Now let's look at some real-life examples that resembles that of an elliptic paraboloid that we see around us. These are examples of an elliptic paraboloid that we see around us, like the nose of the airplane, satellite dish, the nose of a spaceship. What do you think are some other examples of an elliptic paraboloid that you can think of? Now let's go over some example problems on elliptic paraboloid. In this example, we are given this equation of an elliptic paraboloid. And we're supposed to determine where does this elliptic paraboloid opens. And we're supposed to determine the vertex. In order that we can determine where does it open, we'll look at the value of the denominator of this linear equation or the linear part of this um, equation. This, since this is negative, so it opens on the negative side of the axis here is z. So it's going to open on the negative z side. To determine the vertex, again, we remember that the h, k, and j represents the vertex of the elliptic paraboloid. So in this case, the vertex is 1, negative 3, and positive 2. Now let's look at the graph of this elliptic paraboloid in a three-dimensional coordinate system. So I typed in the equation for the first problem. I typed in over here, and then um, I also typed in the vertex. If you notice, the elliptic paraboloid that we got here opens downward or on the or along the negative z axis and if you notice the vertex is at 1 negative 3 2 which matches up to the answer that we have now let's move on to the second problem Okay, so we go over the problem here. In this case, we have a positive denominator here. So it's going to open on the positive z axis. I'm just going to write the answer right here. And again, the vertex is h, k, and j. So then we actually have a vertex of negative 3, 0, and positive 5. Now let's look at the graph of this elliptic paraboloid in a three-dimensional coordinate system. So I typed in the equation for the second problem. And if you notice, the graph, as we expected, the graph opens on the positive z-axis. So that's along the positive z-axis right there. That's where it opens. And then its vertex is located at negative 3, 0, and 5. So this is the 
elliptic paraboloid for the second problem. Now let's move on to the third problem. In this example, we're supposed to change the equation of this given general equation of this elliptic paraboloid down here to its equivalent standard form and we're supposed to determine the vertex so just by looking at this we would not be able to determine the vertex so we need to change we need to change in such a way that we can determine the value for h k and j so the first step that we are going to do is to have this z and 60 on the other side of the equation so then we can go ahead and add 4 z from both sides and minus 60 from both sides so that's plus 4 z minus 60 doing that we can go ahead and cross out the um 4z and the 60 so i'm just going to go ahead and cross that out so we can go ahead and write down the equation the next step that we are going to do is to group together all the x's all the ones that have x's on them the x squared and the 8x here and this 8y squared and negative 48y together so this is how it's going to look like What we do next is we will factor out 2 in the group of x's and we will factor out 8 in the group of y's. And this is how it's going to look like. Okay, the next thing that we are going to do is to complete the squares. So we're going to add a blank on this uh, group of x's and we're going to add another blank here and we will add blanks on the other side as well. So this is how the equation is going to look like. So the number that we put into the blanks would be we are going to get half of the middle term, which is 4. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then square the answer. 2 squared is 4. The same thing that we do here, we get half of 6, that is 3. We square 3, that is 9. The numbers that we're going to put in here to the blanks to make this, both sides of this equation even would be 2 times 4 is 8. So I'm going to write 8 right here. And we have 8 times 9 is 72. So I will put 72 right here. So then we can go ahead and um, simplify this further. Now notice very carefully that this is a perfect square trinomial and this is a perfect square trinomial. So that we can go ahead and rewrite this as... Since we want the standard form of this general form of an elliptic paraboloid, what we do is we are going to divide all of these by 8. So I'm going to divide this by 8, then I will divide this by 8, then I will divide this by 8 as well. So that we can go ahead and um, simplify the values. This one right here would come out. So we already have the standard form of the elliptic paraboloid. We can therefore say that this elliptic paraboloid opens on the positive z-axis and the vertex is negative 2, 3, and negative 5. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down here. Now let's look at the graph of this two equations that we have here in general form and in standard form in a three-dimensional coordinate system. So I typed in both the general equation of the elliptic paraboloid in problem number three and the standard form of the elliptic paraboloid on, again, problem number three. We can see that the vertex of this elliptic paraboloid is located down below, which is negative two, three, and negative five. And if you notice, the red represents the general equation of the elliptic paraboloid. And then the blue represents the standard equation of the elliptic paraboloid. You can see that both the blue and the red graph, so if we look at the red and if we look at the blue, they are both a match. And again, they have both um, the vertex for these two is located on um, negative 2, 3, down, below, right here. Since both of these equations, the general and the standard form, match on the same graph, 
we can therefore say that these two equations are equivalent. That means they, they are just the same, they just come in different form. That's it. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!